Ty the dog guy on the daily and I want to talk today about insurance. Now not necessarily pet insurance although that can be covered in what we're talking about today but uh, I got to thinking the other day that dog training and in investing in dog training um, kind of reminds me about how people invest in insurance. Now when I say investing in dog training I am talking partially about money but I'm also talking about time, effort, you know, engagement, things like that. I'm talking about everything that goes into investing into dog training um, because I've noticed that, like I say, it reminds me of insurance. Think about insurance. Um, almost nobody likes buying it. I mean, they might like the peace of mind that comes with it, but nobody likes buying it because it feels like you're almost losing on two ends. On one end, if something bad happens, let's talk about car insurance, for example. If something bad happens to your car, well, hopefully the insurance is there to take care of it, but, you know, you still had something bad happen. And so, you know, you have to deal with that. Maybe you got deductibles, stuff like that. So if something bad happens, it's maybe hopefully taken care of, but it's still not a good thing. Whereas the flip side, let's say nothing bad ever does happen and you never use it, you just put thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars into something you never used. You're probably grateful, you know, that you never used it, but at the same time, you're like, dang, that's a lot of money that I put into that. Um, and so, like I say, it's one of these things to where, like, I don't think anyone, I don't know, I don't think anyone wakes up going like, oh, I can't, I can't wait to go looking for some insurance. You know, buying insurance is my favorite thing. I doubt there's a lot of folks that are like that. And I look at uh, dog training in a very similar way, um, in that <laughs> a lot of people don't like buying dog training, but they're doing it to hedge against for certain problems that, that might come later, right? Or maybe they've already had the problem, and like I say, this kind of um, uh, you know separates how people how people are you know with with their dogs, with their insurance, things like that. Because some people they get the new car, and they're like, well, the law tells me that I have to buy insurance, and so they do, but they buy the absolute bare minimum. You know, they uh, they're like, I hope I never have to use this, so I'm going to do the absolute bare minimum. And then there's some people that buy the new car and, and whether they've had problems in the past or they anticipate that problems could occur and you know and so they're very gung-ho about that maybe they buy you know just awesome auto excuse me awesome auto insurance that has all sorts of bells and whistles and and protections and things like that and again it's it's very similar with dog training a lot of folks get the dog and they're like well i think you're supposed to do training with the dog but i don't really want to put a, that much into it and i'm talking about time money effort and so they go for the cheap $150, $200 group class, um, which that $150 group class is very similar to that cheap insurance. Like it serves a purpose. You know, the cheap insurance might cover a little bit. Um, the group class might teach you a couple things. But in reality, if you ever run into a real challenge, that insurance ain't going to do you very much good. That $150 group class ain't going to do you much good because it wasn't designed to. It was designed to provide like bare bones, minimum, um, you know, almost nothing. And so, um, and it's the same, like I say, with, uh, with dog training. Some folks just, you know, they, they really want value. They want value out of things. And so they know they're going to put in time. They know they're going to put in effort. And they're not afraid to invest a little bit more, you know, their hard-earned dollars into making sure that their training is the right training and it's not just any which training. I need. I know I need some training, so I'm gonna, you know, buy whichever training is the cheapest out there. You know, um, that's not who they are. Um, and like I say, both folks are doing the right thing, right? They're getting their insurance. They're getting their dog training. Um, but like I say, I, I see a lot of parallels. Now here's where I don't often see the parallel: is that a lot of folks, and I wish this would change, and. and um, I think it does. I think more and more people are seeing training as something that you do, like insurance. You know, even if you don't want to do it necessarily, you still do it because it's right for the dog and it's right for you. But a lot of folks have the disaster with their dog and then they want the training. Um, and this is where, like I say, dog training and insurance vary quite differently. Um, because typically that's not how it works. You know, typically, you know, you don't have the car wreck and be like, ah, gotta go get some insurance. You know, it doesn't work that way. Um, you don't get the, the cancer and be like, oh, got to go get some insurance, you know, health insurance for folks here in the United States. Um, you know, you don't, uh, 
your pet doesn't get sick and then you go get the pet insurance. You know, insurance is something that you buy beforehand. And I always try to, you know, I always try to encourage folks to think of dog training in the same way. That it's something you do beforehand to make sure that the problems don't come. Because if the problems do come, well, if you're buying insurance, you're out of luck. You got it's out of pocket. But it's very similar, you know, in that sense it can be pretty similar to dog training that it's not that you're out of luck, it's just that you got a lot, you know, once those problems are there, to fix it, you're going to be a lot more out of pocket. Ooh, that was some thunder. You're going to be a lot more out of pocket. Time, effort, money, etc. Um, so, uh, figure out which insurance buyer you are. Now, ideally, you're the one that's going for quality. You know, you don't want just the very basics. You want something that's going to see you through no matter what the issues are. Be that, you know, dog training person. And again, that doesn't necessarily mean money. On certain level, it probably will because even if you don't hire trainers, um, it's going to mean um, buying books, buying videos, investing in things, investing time, investing energy. Because like I say, this isn't a video of like, all right, go out there and buy a bunch of expensive dog training. Although I think that's great because it keeps us in business over here. But, um, but it's more than that. It's, it's, it's about where your mind is in relation to making sure that problems don't crop up with your dog and what you can do to be the best dog owner possible.